All right. So here we are at our beginning stage. We have our parent cell. Our parent cell is going to look the same no matter what with mitosis and meiosis. This is our little parent cell. Imagine the green and orange. One is green and orange. One is orange and green. Don't, don't act like they're the same thing. These are our chromosomes. Remember, until they are duplicated, they are just this one strand. And each one of those colors is going to represent a different allele for a different gene. So you're going to be able to see the crossing over pretty well, hopefully. So we're starting with our parent cell. And I'm going to transfer them into our next phase, which is interphase. So what is going to happen to the cell during interphase? There's kind of three major things. What happens during G1? Um. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it grows. So in G1, it's going to grow. And what I want to show here is S phase. What happens during S phase? It's DNA. It's Synthesis. It's Synthesis. DNA copying. So in this phase, trying to find ones that look approximately correct. <laughs> Quinn, oh my gosh. So if we put these guys on here and kind of pair them up, during S phase, the DNA is gonna copy and that's how we get those X-shaped chromosomes. And this is actually super similar to what they really look like. And I'm gonna take snapshots as we go along so that way you'll have pictures of these. Yes, Andrew. Um, is there a DNA mutation in um, the, blue, the blue and red one? Yeah, I might argue there's a little bit of a mutation where one allele is kind of messing up the rest of the chromosome. Uh, and some of these are not perfectly shaped either, but honestly, this is what your DNA looks like. It's all floppy and kind of black. Um, so this is S phase. What happens in G2? G2 is... It grows more. It grows more and it gets ready to divide. So let's go into mitosis. Let's say this is just a regular body cell just so we can recap what happens in each one of these phases. So first of all, I need my other props, my other handy dandy props. Here we go. Yeah, don't, don't ask why I just have a big giant bucket of candy. All right, so oh. three things happen during prophase. What's one of them? Crossing over in meiosis, we're in mitosis. We're gonna start with mitosis and then go from there. One of the things that happens, Andrew. Um, the, 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 whatever, the, 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 the chromatin. So, yes, the chromatin condenses. So right now this stuff would be all long and sticky and stretched out like that. <laughs> And we don't want that. We want that chromatin to condense and squish it up into these chromosomes. So that's step number one. Another thing that has to happen, these guys have to be floating around freely. So what has to go away? The nuclear membrane. The nuclear membrane has to break down. And then there's something else that forms, the spindle. So these little centrosomes are gonna form on the outside of our setup. So that is our start of prophase. And again, we are working just with mitosis right now. We're doing the basics. So we're not in the questions yet. Yeah, we're not in the questions yet. We're just recapping. So in metaphase, our spindles have formed. What's gonna happen, Hattie? They're going to line up at the middle. Now, do they line up next to each other or do they line up in a line? They line up in the line down the middle mm -hmm. because, and, and the two spindles are on the opposite because this side. one is mitosis. So in metaphase, they're going to line up. The chromosomes are going to be together, but they are just their chromatids. 
not their entire chromosome or the sister, not the homologous chromosomes, but the sister chromatids. So that's metaphase. And technically right now, I didn't have anything good for spindle fibers, unless I had like tear apart licorice or something. The spindle fibers would be kind of reaching out and attaching to the middle part of these chromosomes. So each one of these, the little part where the colors mix, that's your centromere, that's the center part of that chromosome. So now, We've done prophase, we've done metaphase. Anaphase, what does that A stand for? A way or action step. So these are gonna get pulled apart. Where are they gonna get pulled apart? Now my focus is messed up. Sister chromatids are gonna be pulled apart. Yes, the sister chromatids are gonna get pulled apart. So these guys are gonna get separated to either side, they're getting pulled apart. Why does this hate my, my focus hates me now. There we go. So that is anaphase. They're getting away, pulled away from each other. And now telophase, what happens to our spindle? It breaks down. Goes away, we don't need it anymore. Now, we've got these guys on one side, these guys on the other, and so we're gonna have two membranes form around these guys. What else happens to them? Think about the stretchy. They're gonna uncoil, the chromatin relaxes. And now we have two separate cells. And if we go back to what our initial parent cell looked like, our initial parent looked like this. So here's our parent cell versus the cell that we just made one of these and one of these. Oh yeah, so they get both as four. And so they're all the same. So is this diploid or haploid? Diploid, because we have the chromosomes, the chromosomes, and we're all the same as the parent cell. All right, now let's make it slightly more interesting. Let's go to meiosis one. Actually, here we go. I even had a whole plate. It's almost like I knew what I was doing for a split second. Okay. Focus, there we go. So our mitosis daughter cells look like this, and that's exactly what our parent cell looked like. So mitosis, we have two identical diploid cells. They are diploid because they are all still connected. Uh, and they look just like that parent cell, which we know in the human body is diploid. So now let's flip and go. Now that all messed up is messed up. We're gonna start with exactly the same parent cell. We're gonna start with the same thing. Again, imagine uh, green and orange is different than orange and green for some reason. And before meiosis, we have to go through interphase with S phase. So before we start meiosis one, if that was our parent cell, what's gonna happen during interphase? They're gonna copy exactly the same thing. So we're gonna go from these singles to the doubles just like this with our beautiful little chromosomes. Maybe a couple of them have a couple mutations, but they'll be fine. Okay, interphase, exactly the same thing between mitosis and meiosis. We're starting with a diploid and we're gonna copy that. So now each one of our chromatids are paired with each other. Next, this is where it's gonna get interesting. Prophase one. I know it still just says prophase, but 
Imagine this is prophase one of meiosis. And these are, the, these are what we're starting with. So same three things are gonna happen. One, the chromatin condenses, so we can see those nice visible chromosomes. Number two, the nuclear membrane is gonna break down. And number three, the spindle is gonna form. Those spindle fibers are gonna pop up on either side. But there's something else important. Hattie, you brought it up earlier, what is it? Crossing over. So these homologous chromosomes are gonna meet up in the middle and they are gonna trade feet. No. Yeah, we're gonna, no. we're, we're gonna do some surgery on our uh, little gummy worms here. Yeah, they're the guillotine scissors. These scissors have many different uses. All right. So now we've got this one, gummy worm manslaughter. Yes, exactly. And Justin, these are a little like hard candy. They're basically the tops of lollipops. Um, here, I'm gonna flip these over so that, that way we can go. What? Yeah, our gummy worms are getting guillotined, those of you in my social studies class. Multi-use scissors. Multi-use for the same scissors. Okay, so now, what have we done? We just made a bunch of new flavors. We made new flavor combinations. So now, they're crisscross, that's why I'm giving you stuff later so that you can, uh, if you care to experiment with your own genetic mutations, you can rip your gummy worms apart and put them in all new flavor combinations. But this is the big difference between prophase in mitosis versus prophase one in meiosis is that crossing over moment. So these homologous chromosomes, they're paired. This is synapsis when they're paired up together and then genetic uh, recombination, AKA crossing over, they crisscross and they trade feet. So that's our prophase step. Yes. Yeah, the top ones look semi-normal. The bottom, the bottom got a little mangled, a little butchered, but we're going to make it work. Okay, so moving on to metaphase, what's going to happen to my other, um, my chromosomes now? They're going to move to the middle. It hates you. Yeah, it, this focus really hates me. They're going to be in pairs. They're going to stay those homologous pairs. So they're not lining up straight down the middle like they did in metaphase for mitosis. They're gonna line up side by side like this. And we've got our spindle. Our spindle fibers are gonna attach. But here's the thing, they're not gonna separate the X structure. They're gonna separate the whole uh, chromosomes from either side of each other. So, so we're gonna take a picture of that. So that means after that. And then we're on to anaphase one. So it's still the action, the away step. But the difference is we're starting with these guys and they're side by side. So instead of separating like this, that doesn't make sense. They're gonna bonk into these ones over here. They're gonna separate the whole chromosomes away from each other. They're gonna separate the sisters from each other. So that would be anaphase one of meiosis. The way that we can tell this, if somebody just gave us a snapshot and asked which phase of, is this mitosis or meiosis? We could instantly say meiosis because we have chromosomes that are side by side each other, homologous chromosomes. That only happens during meiosis one. So they get separated in that step of anaphase. Now, telophase, kind of our last major step here. Spindle fibers go bye-bye. Chromatin relaxes and now, the new nuclear membrane is gonna form around these guys. There we go. So now let's compare our parent cell 
versus what we just did with these daughter cells. So one of our daughter cells has these four little chromosome pieces in it. And one of our daughters has these four little chromosome pieces in it. And we started with these. So what do you notice about the daughters? Mm -hmm. They're different. They're different. Are they the same as each other? No. No. Are they the same as the parent? No. no, they're completely different because of that genetic recombination, AKA crossing over. So our daughter cells are completely different than what we initially started with, with the parent cell and they're different from each other. They're kind of sort of similar because they code for the same thing. They're the same sort of instruction manual, but they're not exactly the same uh, setup. Like a twin can be either a boy or a girl. Yeah, yeah, more fraternal twins, less identical twins. So is this, are each of these cells haploid or diploid? They're haploid. haploid. They're diploid. They are still diploid because they still have their full little chromosome kind of pairs. They're just not, they don't have as many or they have the same number, but they just look different than what we started with. So these are the two diploid cells, but they're not identical. In mitosis, we get two identical diploids. In meiosis, we get two non-identical diploids. In meiosis, one. But we're only halfway done. We got to start again at meiosis two. So now we start with these guys. In prophase, where to put prophase? Prophase, come back. I have telophase, I have anaphase, I have, there it is. I was like, I have metaphase. Where's my prophase? Okay. So now we're in meiosis two. These are two totally separate cells. So what I'm gonna do is just go boop and say bye bye to those guys. So now we're in prophase two with the red-orange series of chromosomes. So during prophase, chromatin condenses, nuclear membrane breaks down, spindle fibers form. I hope that at this point you are super tired of hearing me say that over and over again, uh, because hopefully that means it is now stuck in your brain. So prophase looks exactly the same. Now with metaphase, are these guys paired up? during metaphase, not the second time around because they don't have a buddy. Do they have crossing over in prophase one? No, because they don't have a buddy. These guys are totally separate. The blue and purple are to or the blue and uh, green are totally separate from the red and yellow. So they don't have crossing over. So now metaphase, they're lined up at the middle. They are not paired for metaphase two. And then anaphase two, are we separating the chromatids or are we separating the chromosomes? Um, chromatids. chromatids. We already separated homologous chromosomes. So now when we get a spindle fiber to attach on this side and a spindle fiber to attach on this side, they're gonna pull like this and we're gonna separate our chromatids from each other. And they keep that same crossing over, that same genetic information. They're gonna split. And then during telophase, that spindle fiber breaks down, new nuclear membrane forms around both of them. And we end up with some daughter cells. One of them looks like this, one of them looks like this. So are these daughter cells haploid or diploid? Haploid. Haploid, because they only have half the number. They don't have a full X anymore. Aww. So for our meiosis one daughters, or meiosis two daughters, here's one daughter cell. Here's another daughter cell, but we got to put this off to the side because we have a whole nother daughter cell that we just completely left. 
a whole nother cell that ended up over here. Remember, we had these that also got formed because I always talk about how we're going to end with four of these uh, haploid cells. We ended with two because we had this whole cell sitting off to the side and it's going to do exactly the same thing. So let's walk through this, ignore that it's, it says prophase at the top. So prophase, the chromatin condenses, spindle fibers form, and we get ready to divide. What about metaphase? How are these, are they gonna sit next to each other? Or are they gonna sit in a line? In a line. In a line, because they're non-homologous chromosomes. Then anaphase is gonna split the chromatids to either side. And then telophase, those spindles are gonna break down and we end up with this haploid cell and this haploid cell. So now let's look at our four different daughter cells. These are our meiosis two daughter cells. They are all different from each other. They are all haploid. They all look like genetic. <laughs> yeah, and they all look a, a little mutated. But again, this is the same parent cell that we started with. Our parent cell had four. Now, all of our daughters have two. Haploid is half. So this is uh, not human DNA, thankfully. I'm, I would be more worried if it was this mutated for the human DNA. But this is what we end with, four haploid cells that are not identical. And all this crossing over gave us a bunch of genetic variation because if we didn't cut up those and we only use the ones from the bag, we could never have a red and orange because that's not in the bag of trolleys. We could never have a green and yellow because that doesn't come that way. So we have kind of two of the originals that didn't really cross over. And then we have a set that has some of the crossing over DNA in it.